It's finally here. The Game Boy I've been waiting for. The one that Nintendo never made. While to the untrained eye, this may look like a regular Game Boy Pocket, turn it on and we're greeted with a different, yet familiar splash screen. The Pocket was my first ever Game Boy and I honestly think it's the perfect form factor for the platform. It's compact, has that classic Game Boy design, but now it's enhanced with a brand new motherboard that integrates a Game Boy Color CPU. This is the Game Boy Pocket Color, an incredible mod created by Bucket Mouse that brings us Game Boy Color functionality to the Game Boy Pocket. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I have the opportunity to show you a project that I have just been waiting for someone to create and it's finally here. This is the Game Boy Pocket Color. You heard me right. This is a Game Boy Pocket, but with an all new custom motherboard created by Bucket Mouse, which integrates an original Game Boy Color CPU. And it fits seamlessly into the pocket shell without modification. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, the name Bucket Mouse may sound familiar to you, and that's because I covered another one of his mods, the DMG Color, which essentially converts the DMG into a Game Boy Color also. His mods are extremely refined and have a high degree of polish. You can tell that he really takes pride in his work. I'll have the DMG Color video linked down below if you're interested in checking it out. Bucket Mouse additionally has developed other really amazing projects such as reverse engineered circuit boards for nearly all game cartridges, ranging from the Sega Genesis all the way to, of course, the Game Boy and almost everything in between. He even made some very cool multi-carts that allow you to place up to four games inside, like this one here, which has a button that allows you to cycle through a few games. Definitely check out his Etsy store, which I'll have linked down below. Now, what's great about this Game Boy Pocket Color mod and other Bucket Mouse mods like it is that they can revive damaged consoles. By harvesting the working components of a broken Game Boy Color, you're able to create an essentially brand new working one, but in a different form factor, which is pretty exciting. For example, this Game Boy Color, which I'll be using for this mod, I bought for parts or repair because it was described as having a damaged screen and no sound. This is the perfect candidate for this mod since it appears as though the console does indeed work, but it has some other issues that will be resolved once we transplant all the necessary components to our new Bucket Mouse Pocket Color motherboard. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so in this video, I'll go over all the parts I'll be using to build the Pocket Color. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, go over all of its unique features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing I have here is the custom motherboard itself. As you can see, it looks very much like an original Nintendo motherboard with its green and white color, but you can also get it in these other really cool colors as well. Now you'll notice that my board has come pre-populated with quite a few components already soldered in place. Please note that if you plan to pursue this project, Bucket Mouse sells these boards completely bare at his store. You will need to populate them in their entirety by yourself. Mine, again, has been pre-populated and only missing a few key components that I'll show you how to install later on in the video. Just know that, again, these boards come completely bare without any components soldered onto them, and that this is a pretty difficult project that requires you to be very proficient in soldering. Now, you'll also need to pick up one of these custom Bucket Mouse power boards, which is designed specifically for this mod. You cannot use the original power board from your donor system, However, Bucket Mouse has ensured that the Pocket Color motherboard is compatible with other power boards like the ones made by Frago Customs. In addition to the custom motherboard and power board, you'll need to pick up a few other parts to complete the build. All these parts can be found on Bucket Mouse's detailed build of material list found on his GitHub, but these items include an aftermarket IPS screen, a pocket shell, buttons, membranes, and screen lens. I picked up all these miscellaneous parts from Retro Game Repair Shop, where you can use the coupon code TITO at checkout to save 10% on your entire order. I'll leave a link to everything that I got down below in the video description. Now, of course, you will also need a donor Game Boy, preferably one that is damaged in some capacity, but has a good working CPU. 
And again, just to reiterate, this mod is very challenging with lots of parts that are extremely small. So again, this project is for experienced modders only. And just to add on to that, you'll definitely want to read the GitHub in its entirety, as it has absolutely everything you need to know about this mod. All right, so that's everything I'll be using to build the pocket color. But before we get into the installation portion of the video, let's talk about today's sponsor, iFixit. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I consistently rely on my trusty iFixit ProTech Toolkit for most of my mod videos. iFixit is on a mission to empower retro tech enthusiasts and DIYers, helping us breathe new life into our consoles and other electronic devices. iFixit is excited to announce their new partnership with GullyKit, the folks who brought us the amazingly reliable Hall Effect analog stick replacements for the Nintendo Switch. This partnership underscores iFixit's commitment to not just repair, but also to enhance your electronics. Explore their all-inclusive analog stick replacement kits for the Nintendo Switch, and indulge in fantastic holiday bundles designed to kickstart your modding and repairing journey. And as an added benefit, you can now unlock more savings when you buy a replacement part and score an additional 10% off a holiday bundle like the incredible Gamer Bundle, making this holiday season a memorable one for your DIY-loving friends or family members. Visit iFixit's online store to see everything they have to offer using the link in the description below. And again, a huge thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's go ahead and build this Game Boy Pocket Color. All right, to get started, I'm gonna tear down this broken Game Boy Color to get to the motherboard. And thankfully, it'll be pretty simple because it's missing nearly all of its screws. And I can already notice an issue here. The previous owner appears to have removed all the electrolytic caps, which is most likely why the console wasn't working correctly. Anyway, once we got the board out, we're gonna remove quite a few components, starting with the CPU. For this, I'll be using hot air. Then I'll go ahead and start to pull off all the other components needed to be transplanted. So this here is the power switch. These tend to get really dirty and can really affect performance of the console. So we're gonna disassemble and thoroughly clean it. Here you can see just how dirty it is. I'm using some 1000 grit sandpaper to remove oxidation on the switch prongs. And then for good measure, I'll apply some deoxid to prevent any further oxidation and provide a layer of protection. Now let's grab our brand new Bucket Mouse Pocket Color motherboard and begin to populate it with parts from our donor console, starting again with the CPU. Now I have to reiterate that this requires advanced soldering skills. This is not for beginners. To solder in the CPU, I first ensure that all the pins are perfectly aligned. Tack it in place, and then do a rough soldering followed by touch-ups. And of course, I use a lot of flux in order to get clean, solid joints.
And this is what the CPU should look like when it's all soldered in place. I then follow the same process for the SRAM module. Next, I'm going to be installing a few tiny ceramic capacitors and then the oscillating crystal. After installing these smaller components, I'll begin to solder in some of the other larger ones, like the volume potentiometer and power switch. And here is the fully populated power board, which goes in next. Now, since I'm going to be using AAA batteries for this build, I do need to bridge these two pads using either a piece of wire or a zero ohm resistor. 
If you plan to use a LiPo battery, you do not need to bridge these pads. Now before proceeding, let's test the console real quick to make sure that it's working properly before we install the cart connector. Just connect the IPS panel, give the unit power, and then switch it on. And if all is working as expected, you should see the Game Boy Color splash screen as shown, which means we can proceed with the install. So moving our attention back to the donor console, let's remove the cartridge connector. and then install it into our new motherboard. Now before proceeding, we need to trim all the cart pins as low as possible and then cover it with some Kapton tape in order to ensure that they do not short out against the IPS panel's metal housing. And then we can install all the remaining components like the link port connector. Now let's start prepping the IPS kit. Because Bucket Mouse integrated all of its controls into the motherboard, we can remove the touch sensors. Then we can proceed to solder in all the necessary wires for controlling the IPS kit. We don't need to solder in a wire for ground. Once that's done, we can drop in the IPS panel. and then drop in all of our buttons and membranes. Followed lastly by the motherboard. Now we can finish up the wiring by connecting the IPS panel to the corresponding pads on the motherboard. It helps to use different color wires since you can't see the pads which the wires are coming from on the IPS driver board. After tidying up the wiring, we can now drop in the power button, followed by the rear shell, and then button it all up. Then drop in some fresh AAA nickel metal hydride batteries, insert your favorite game, and then since we have the funny playing IPS kit, we can adjust the position of the screen to make sure that it's perfectly aligned with the screen lens, wrapping up the installation. For me, this is the ultimate form of the original Game Boy. You have the function of the Game Boy Color in the body of the sleek and compact pocket this is something that Nintendo never made, but Bucket Mouse delivered. A truly fantastic way to enjoy the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color library. Now, as far as features are concerned, there are no outwardly facing tangible features other than the ability to play Game Boy Color games on the pocket form factor. Really, all the true features are under the hood, making this whole mod possible. Things like the modernized and super efficient Switch Mode Power Board, which gives up to about five and a half hours of playtime under certain circumstances on two tiny AAA nickel metal hydride batteries. This is of course under ideal conditions like the lowest brightness setting on the IPS display and not using a flash cart. 
However, the more likely playtime under realistic conditions will be around two to three hours. Additionally, with the integration of a modern audio amp, the sound is crisp with no noticeable noise, although it does appear to be only slightly louder than a standard Game Boy. Again, Bucket Mouse's GitHub really does document all the attributes in excruciating detail, so definitely check it out if you want to learn more. Now, while my particular build utilizes two AAA batteries for powering the console, Bucket Mouse also incorporated the ability to use rechargeable lithium ion batteries that does provide longer battery life. This was still being worked on during the filming of this video, but should be ready and published on his GitHub soon. Also, he integrated this rocker switch, which now controls the two touch sensors we removed from the IPS kit driver board, which is the brightness by switching up, as well as changing the color palette by switching down. This is actually really cool that he included this since it makes for a much cleaner and more reliable build as we all know that the touch sensors can be a bit finicky. And lastly, like I mentioned earlier, Bucket Mouse wanted his kit to be compatible with many of the existing Game Boy mods that are out there. For the most up-to-date list of compatible mods, again, definitely check out his GitHub. Anyway, those are the primary features of this kit. So now, let's go over the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. Now, while this may be my own biased opinion, I think this is the best looking Game Boy Color and is honestly my go-to for playing original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. While I do have the analog pocket, which is in and of itself a fantastic handheld, there is something about the compact classic shape of Nintendo's pocket. I mean, it is quite a bit smaller. Now, I also did a review of a similar type of kit, which uses an original Game Boy Color motherboard, but puts it inside of a metal shell that's close in dimensions to the pocket. But honestly, using an original plastic Game Boy Pocket shell just hits in all the right places. I know some people will say that the controls are crammed and that the battery life isn't great, and to that I'd say you're right, but I still absolutely love it. Bucket Mouse did an incredible job with this mod, and you can tell that he really put in a ton of effort to make this an exceptional kit. Another pro, like I said earlier, is the kit's ability to accept quite a few other mods. I really like how Bucket Mouse put some flexibility into this kit. If you want LEDs, tactile switch buttons, or a different power board, you've got options. And lastly, in terms of preservation, this provides us with yet another way to save damaged Game Boy Colors. While you can perform this mod with a perfectly working donor Game Boy Color, I see the real value when using one that is irreparably damaged in some way and giving it a second lease on life. Anyway, those are the pros. But now, let's get into the cons. Now, while there is a ton to love about this adorable Game Boy, there are a few cons. First and foremost, this is a very difficult build. You really do need a ton of experience to pull one of these off. Thankfully, if you're dead set on having a pocket color of your own, but perhaps lack the soldering skills to make one, a modder by the name of Jack Makes does commissions. I'll leave a link to his store down below in the video description. Additionally, if Bucket Mouse's other project, the DMG Color, is more your flavor, another modder by the name of Cody Wicker takes on commissions to build those as well. So while these are very difficult and involve mods, there are avenues to get these commissioned. Just be warned, it is going to be pretty expensive. Now, battery life can be considered another con when using AAA batteries. Bucket Mouse has a ton of documentation on his GitHub with respect to battery life, but in short, on a pair of quality nickel metal hydride AAA on a loop batteries, you can expect about two to three hours of playtime and up to five hours, depending on things like if you're using a flash cart and if you have the brightness on your screen turned all the way up. If you do plan to go the AAA battery route, I definitely recommend installing a battery indicator LED, which I unfortunately didn't install in mine, because I did have the Game Boy die on me without warning while playing Pokemon Crystal for an extended period of time. While I like using AAAs, since they're super easy to swap in and out, I can see a LiPo battery being a better approach when using this build. And the last con will vary in severity depending on the user, but in keeping with the original pocket design, the IR transceiver has been removed. For me, this isn't a huge deal since I never use this feature. However, for those that make frequent use of the sensor, I can see this potentially being a deal breaker. Regardless, for me, this is an incredible achievement and really the Game Boy mod I have been waiting for. I have a real soft spot for the Game Boy Pocket and this definitely is what I've been waiting for. Well, there you have it folks, the Game Boy Pocket Color, a reverse engineered Game Boy motherboard that fits inside the pocket shell. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next Thursday.